how to become a fluent English speaker. With English exactly like any other discipline, if you have incorrect beliefs or myths, the road to mastery will inevitably be long, boring, and I think probably result in failure. For truly motivated learners, the hardest thing about success is not hard work, as most people assume, but rather the question of skillful methods, self-awareness, and as well we, you know, we will discuss today uh, how we can unlearn the myth that we have been told our whole lives. I will present you today six myths of English fluency, and those are the fruit of my own process as a language learner and teacher. Okay, let's start. Myth number one, fluent speakers don't make mistakes. There is a popular idea that fluency is a magical land of perfect grammar, native-like pronunciation, and unobstructed communication. The truth is that the fluency is none of this. You know, the truth is that few people, if any, including the native uh, speakers, speak with perfect grammar, and nearly 99% of people who learn English as a second language will always have some sort of accent from their native language. You can work to smooth it out, but your accent is your cultural identity, and this is not uh, a bad thing. Good English and language learners learn to communicate first, or at the same time as they learn grammar. And they work through their grammar, their pronunciation problems, on a parallel basis or after. Mis mistakes will surely happen when you open your mouth. But this is the past to fluency. The baby does not learn to walk by crawling. She falls and falls a lot. Myth number two, fluency comes when you learn all the grammar. Another popular misconception which goes hand in hand with myth one is the idea that fluency is a distant reality that will come one day when you have learned enough English grammar. Yeah, it's okay to expect fluency in the future and big advances in your grammar and this is uh, sure to happen with um, diligence and hard work. But you cannot start um, Sorry, you can start actually finding the courage to attempt small everyday pieces of fluency right now. The theory and practice should go hand in hand throughout the entire process. If you are not learning to use the grammar you learn now, you will probably forget it later. Successful learners are able to cultivate fluency from the very beginning in specific situations. If you know only, you know, if you only know how to introduce yourself, Learn how to do this with confidence by doing it a lot, whenever, wherever, and with whoever you can. Learn basic survival English, how to say hello and goodbye, and start thinking about every grammar lesson you learn as something you will apply the next day. This will be a big shift in your attitude that will help you with everything else, guys. Bits of fluency that will not go away, you know, it's almost as if you are writing a script for, for a play that you will act in over and over again. Every situation has opportunity for fluence and the first thing that you should focus on everyday situations. Because fluence is not just an abstract long-term plan but a daily opportunity that you can cultivate. Myth number three is that you must study abroad or be immersed with natives. A study abroad, you know, like um, some English exchange program, can be an amazing learning experience, a big help for fluence as well as a great pleasure for your life. But it's not a magic pill for your failures at home, nor a, nor a must for reaching fluency. As I discussed that, you know, there are a lot of people who believe such an experience to be the solution to all their English problems. They often buy into this myth that you know like spend a lot of time and money going you know and they only come back disappointed by not having learned much english if you have a time and resources and are self-directed learner i would also recommend trying to plan you know back up backpacking trip and finding schools or programs independently as you go along 
Nothing is better than meaningful cultural adventure that will grant you special and linguistic opportunities. If you want to speak English the entire time, it might be a good idea to travel alone or without other people from your country. I have been there. I've tried that. Even if you don't leave your home country fluency, can be closer than you think if you adapt the proper lifestyle to support an enjoyable, consistent process that enables you to live your life through English. Myth number four, you need uh, a certificate, external approval to be fluent. So fluency is not an external piece of paper, guys, nor it's the uh, approval of your friends or workmates. You, know, you, are, you are the only one, I think, you can decide if you are fluent. Receiving a piece of paper that shows, you know, that shows you learned how to take a um, standardized test. It's not going to fix that. The only real life use of language and contact with the culture can give you a sense of personal ownership, like fluency. There are plenty of people armed with a test score that gives them a um, sense of false confidence about their English level, while not knowing how to communicate spontaneously in a real life cultural situation that calls for them to respond in the most human and personal of ways. Myth number five. So you need to think in English to get fluent. Uh, people often say that, that, that the key to fluency is to think in English. While this is true for advanced students, it's almost always a myth for a lower levels. What this means is that the people are confusing the byproduct of fluency, like thinking in English, with the process itself. What is the process of building the necessary structure to be able to think in English? You have to learn how to walk before you can run. You have to learn, acquire, absorb the foundation that enables you to think in English before you can consider this as a real option. And the last one, finally, myth number six, you understand everybody when you are fluent. Again, like guys, fluency is not, is not this magical land of perfect communication and comprehension. Don't expect to understand everything, you know. I mean, don't take it personally when you don't understand, you know, don't believe people who tell you that they understand everything, you know. Even native speakers don't understand each other sometimes, you know? like, and advanced learners of English, they often feel bad when they are in a group, in group situation that they don't understand what's being said. And they, they often feel bad when they don't understand the, for example, the ly lyrics of song. Recognize that this happens to everybody. As far as an intermediate learners, they often feel that fluency is so far away because they don't understand anything at all. If you are intermediate, understand that you are not as far away as you think. If you create a lifestyle that facilitates your daily contact, and if you have the grammatical structure and vocabulary, I think it's just a question of um, conditioning your hearing to the new sounds. So some situation you will probably not understand no matter what your level, because it's a new accent, it's a new um, social or professional context with specific vocabulary, new city or some other situations that you have to build context for um, before you understand. So relax and know that, you know, you will always encounter situations when you don't understand what's being said. Don't panic. It's a natural part of the process. You know? And the more you build fluency, and the more you have a contact with a wide variety of native sources, the easier it will get. You will always be learning. So just relax and start building daily contact with the language through, you know, like lifestyle English, you know, online radio, you know, um, podcast, TV shows, you will be surprised how quickly your listening comprehension and speaking to a different extent will improve with just, a, a, just a, an hour a day of native speaking exposure. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate the likes, shares, comments, and feedback. I'm here to help you on your path 
to English fluency and your participation makes it all worthwhile. Good luck.